Okay, so today we're gonna throw a bigger bowl. So I'm gonna use a 10 pound bat ball of clay. So why is this important, right? Part of the struggle of becoming a better potter is learning how to deal with different amounts of clay, right? So last time we talked about plates, we did four pounds. Plates have certain advantages because they lay flat, right? They don't necessarily collapse that much. So this today, we're gonna to talk about bigger bowls and some tricks about how we deal with that. And then next week, a week from today, we're gonna to talk about bases, right? And how to throw that. So we're basically taking the things that we learned last term and upping the ante a little bit. If that makes sense. I'm gonna start with 10 pounds, but you start with more clay than what you're comfortable with. So four, five pounds, and that range is usually good. Like, if that makes sense. So this clay is also a little bit soft and this is reclaimed clay. So it's not as good as your clay. I wedged it like crazy already. So that's the first trick is wedge the clay up really good. Does that make sense? Don't. And also, if I were really serious about this, I would have wedged the clay yesterday or an hour ago and let it sit up and then wedge it again. Because the more it's wedged, the better. And this isn't as important for bowls, but wedging and clay preparation and the quality of the clay becomes more important for bigger pieces, right? Because you're pushing yourself. You wanna give yourself every advantage you can, right? So it's wedged and so now I'm gonna slap it on a bat. You gotta throw this on a bat. It's gonna stay on the bat. This is gonna be way too big for me to take off the bat at the end. So pick a bat that's gonna work, right? We're gonna pop it on there, right? So it's on there and then I'm, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is slap it down a little bit. You notice I didn't really stick it down, right? I just set it on there, but I'm gonna do this. So what is this? I'm slapping it into the center, meaning I'm first of all, just cupping my hands, right? Like this and spending some time bashing it into the middle. Why am I doing that? This helps get it more into the middle without me having to expend much energy, right? The minute I put water on here, there's like a little timer that starts clicking. The clay is absorbing water and becoming softer, right? And by spending some time centering it through this technique means hopefully later, I, I don't have to spend as much time centering, right? Because centering is very difficult experience, right? You're really bearing down on it and you get worn out, right? So I wanna make, make it easier for myself to do a good job. Let me turn off this thing that's going on back here. There we go. So here we go. So here we oh, spend some time slap centering, right? And it's looking pretty good, but you can tell by holding your finger up and seeing, you see how it's pretty close, right? So this is a much bigger piece of clay than what I did before, right? Um, so I need to wet this whole thing down and then just spend some time centering, right? So I'm going to start at the bottom and muscle this in a little bit. You see that? And you see how slow I'm going, right? I'm going really slow and going up and using my centering know-how, right? That I know I hopefully, I yes, I use mainly here and here. Right, so I got it up in the air. It's looking okay, right? And you see how slow I'm going. If you go fast, the clay ends up throwing you around and you don't end up centering the clay. Now, there's also, this clay is a little bit soft, right? Why is that? Well, it's easier to center, right? So that makes it easier for me and it beats me up less. If your clay is a little bit hard, it's gonna be a real chore to get centered. Right now, I'm gonna push it back down just like we do, but you see how everything happens slower? My wheel speed is slow, right? You gotta go slow for bigger pieces of clay. So you see how, what I just did. Now, throwing big also, bigger piece of clay also will improve everything else you do. It'll emphasize some of your weak points, right? And things that maybe you were getting away, being a little bit sloppy on your technique before, this will help you out a lot. And it'll, you'll have to fix those things and it'll make you stronger, right? So when you go back to little pieces of clay, it'll be much easier. Now, did we talk about this last time where we're gonna center just this part now instead of trying to center the whole thing? This is the key difference, right? Oh, we didn't do this with plates because plates was really soft. 
We're gonna just focus on this as if this top little blob is all I got. So I wet that down, I'm gonna focus here. You see, I'm just gonna center this much. And I know how to center this much, no problem, right? I do this all the time for like cups and stuff, right? So I come up, oh, that's looking pretty good. Then I'll push that back down, right? If this top part isn't centered, I'll do it again. Let's just do it again for fun, right? Go up again. I can speed up my wheel a little bit here, right? Because I'm just dealing with a little chunk of clay up here, right? And I'll go back down. Now, once I feel like this part is pretty centered, I'm going to grab down just like a little bit lower. You see that drop down to this part and squeeze and go up. And you can see how that knocks that part a little bit off center, right? Because I'm squeezing some of the off center part up into the top and that knocks this part off center. And then I got to come back up here and then recenter the whole thing. You see that how I'm able to center all this wet stuff. I just decoup and have it go away. And I push back down like that. And I slowly release, right? So that's feeling better. So I'll go down to here. I'll probably do it from like here up. You can see that that part isn't centered. This is always the hardest part to center. But you notice that we're tackling it in parts. We're not trying to center the whole thing all at once. I'm center a little bit at the top, push it back down, then grab a little more, center that up and push it back down and then grab a little more, right? You stay at one level for as long as you can till you can get it mostly centered. That makes sense to everybody. This is the trick. So here I'm doing this part, it's hard. Go slow now because I'm actually dealing with a pretty big chunk of clay, right? I'm not squeezing, I mean, I'm not going fast. That's the key, go slow. You see that? And it takes a long time to go up. You will get a little beat up, lots of clay. If you haven't done lots of throwing, if you're not very good at throwing large chunks of clay, it's gonna wear you out, first of all, which is good because that's the way how you learn. Two, lots of clay is gonna come off. Just let all that clay come off on your hands and put it in the water, right? And then I push it back down. Now, right, if I, I'm pretty experienced, so I can get it centered pretty much at each level as I go up, right? There's a combination, I'm doing a combination of finesse and knowing how hard to squeeze, right? And you guys don't have that yet. So here, I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna squeeze, go slow. Look how slow I start going to do this part, right? I'm going up, I go up. There are other techniques that you can learn where you don't have to center at all, right? We're just doing the center way, right? There, looking pretty good. I'll push it back down, do the whole thing one more time. This wheel is beautiful, by the way. Here we go. Now, it's not going to be 1 million percent centered. It's going to be mostly centered. The thing about throwing and clay is as you get better, you can kind of shortcut some of the steps, right? There's a little bit of a waver down here. I can leave that, even though it's pretty close. All the clay that comes off, you can get rid of. All right, so now we're ready. So I have to start thinking about what kind of bowl I want to make. Right? Do I want to make a wider, more open bowl that has a flat bottom? Do I want to make a bowl that right turn starts turning upwards right away? Let's go for a flat bottom bowl, right? Because it start, it'll go flat for a little bit and then make it turn up into the size. That's a pretty common shape. So let's just push this guy down like crazy. So what am I doing now? I'm pre preparing to think about what I want, right? So I might, maybe this is wide enough. I'll know when this clay gets smashed down, right? I'll have a good feeling for the mound, the proportion of the mound size. My feeling is that I'm gonna push this the initial blob out a little bit more, right? To give myself more width. I'm just pushing this downward. You see that now? Benefit of soft clay, right? It's easier to center and it's very much easier to do this part, right? Because I'm really trying to move it around, right? It just feels like there's not enough width here. So I'm gonna expand that width out. I'm gonna use the same technique that we did last week with plates, right? So I'm gonna lay part of my hand way down here at the bottom, right? To keep this edge from folding over. And I'm gonna push this clay down just to make it just a touch wider. Yeah. 
See that how it's getting wider slowly? That's pretty good, right? That's feeling really good for how much clay I got and what I want. All that goopy stuff comes off. And then I'm gonna flatten this out some. So now I did all my prep work, right? I'm ready to actually start shaping it into a bowl. See how slow I'm going again? Don't go fast, slow is the key. Slow also means that you need to be strong enough to hold that position for longer too. That makes sense to everybody that you will become a stronger thrower, right? So here, now I just go down like normal. Like that, going down. Now I wanna be super careful about how deep I go. So I'm gonna stop really short and just check my depth here, right? Let's go really short and just check my depth. Oh, that's really too thick, right? But since it's gonna be such a massive bowl, everything's gonna get bigger. How deep my foot is, how deep the bottom, right? How much cavity, empty space I have below the foot. So I actually wanna leave this thicker than I normally would because proportionately having a deeper foot probably would look bigger, right? It probably looks better in it. That makes sense? that you don't want to leave the same amount of clay down there as you would with a smaller bowl, right? Because everything will look big except for your foot will be really shallow in comparison. So in general, leave more thickness down here than you normally would. So that's looking really good. So normally I would leave like that much. That's about enough for me, right? You see that? So I'm leaving a little bit more. Now, what we're gonna do here is just pull back flat for a little bit, right? So. Pull back straight and flat. Ooh, that little wave of clay is starting to happen. Remember that right there? So I'm gonna take that, suppress that back down, then keep opening, add some more water. So I'm just really watching the inside, trying to make it flat as I go out. Go slow. This takes some muscle too, right? Go slow and pull straight back as you go. You see, I added more water in there. So we're making a flat bottom bowl. Now, if this is looking really funky in here, you see that it's like a dimple and a low spot and it goes high again. I should fix that now. So before I finish, so I'm gonna take some time in here and move some clay kind of back and forth to get it mostly evened out. Any questions so far? It's a lot of clay. Yes, go ahead. Uh, because I just end up with a whole handful of goopy stuff. I just don't like it all building up on me. So I just, I like water. So my teacher was always about using, he was, a, he liked using water. And he was one of the best throwers I've ever seen, right? So there's all these people talk, use water, don't use water or whatever, right? I think you do whatever you need to do to get it done, right? So if you want to use lots of water to get it done, go for it. If you... It's all about the pot. It's not about how much water you, in the end, right? So, so now I got it out. You see, I got it out to the distance I want. So now I'm going to start cleaning up the bottom, really cleaning up the bottom. Like I spent some time doing that. This is maybe a little thick, so I'll push this out just a little bit more. There we go. All right, and now I'm going to spend some time cleaning up this spot in here. So I'm going to use one of these ribs first. I'm going to clean out all the goopy. And then you see it's pretty flat, right? But I'm gonna really spend some time and tighten up the bottom. Now, this is a really wet clay and I'm adding a lot of water. I wanna be able to trim this next class. And you see how I'm gonna use the flat end of this because there's just barely enough room for me to use the flat end of this here, right? To, ooh, that, that really smoothed out beautifully. All right, get up rid of all that goopiness. So, if you think that you want to keep, there are people that reuse Goopy like crazy, that works, right? If it doesn't work for you, don't do it. Do something else. That makes sense. So, and then there's some people that, yes, they don't want to use Goopiness or whatever. And they're great throwers, right? I'm not going to argue with them. They, if they got, they do what they need to do, right? And, but there are a lot of different ways to get the same place, it's, I think. And the art of it comes from you picking a different route, right? A lot of, for me, I believe that it's difficult to end up with something different 
by doing the same thing somebody else did. Right? That makes sense? And then if you do the same thing over and over again, you're going to end up with the same thing. All right, so now we're about to throw this, right? Get this wider. So let me see if we can get this looking correct here. Uh, ah, it's all backwards when I move it. It's like mirror image. So it's like this the way it needs to go. That's the way it needs to go. That way. Ah, why is it so loose? All right, so now what we're going to do here is... Now I'm going to take this and then throw this, start raising it. This is a very short, squatty cylinder, right? And you see how that was always my goal to make a squatty, fat cylinder. And I can think about this. If I make it half the thickness, it'll be twice as high, right? And you see that just from the overhead view, it's pretty even, right? And that's what I want too. If it isn't even, I would do the first raise. And for example, if it's much thicker, down here, I would squeeze harder down here, right? To get it mostly even, okay? Now, when I make my bulb, it will be thicker down here, but I don't want a crazy thicker down there. All right, so I'm gonna wet both sides. And you think about this, this is a really wide cylinder, right? It is really wide. So, probably should ask that person to stop spraying. Is that okay? Can someone run over there? Yeah. Thank you. Probably gay. It's just too much. I just can't. It just means I'm con competing with them. Too many distractions. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to throw, and then I am going to squeeze harder from the inside. I am going to push out way down here and push straight out, right? I don't want to push downward because I've established this plane here, right? If I push down and I dip below my my floor, then I have to do something to make it look even again, right? So I'll push straight out from the inside here, right? I'll do the same outside as doing this, but when I throw, I'm gonna let it wander away, right? I'm gonna let it go out, just like we do. But remember that this is whipping around really fast, right? It's not a small cylinder. This is much bigger, so I need to go slow. Why is that? If I go slow, I can kind of keep control of it, right? If I go fast, I can very quickly lose control, right? And by going slow, I can feel how it's, what it's doing better, right? If I go fast, it starts doing things and it's already too late for me to react, right? Does that make sense? So overall speed of the clay going through your fingers needs to be about the same. Does that make sense? So smaller, faster, wider, slower. So here, I'm gonna push and I'm pushing out mainly from here from the inside, and I'm slowly gonna go up and out. You see that? I'm hardly putting any pressure from the inside, right? So you're probably thinking, why can't you just throw it as a cylinder and stretch it out? Yes, you can. And that's the way, like when I was like you guys, I used to throw cylinders and then push them out. It's a lot of work to stretch out something later, right? Once you get it nice and beautiful and even and weak, Right, is the other thing, right? Thin, it's a it's a lot of work for that thin piece of clay, especially the rim, to move all the way out. Right? Right here, it already start it already kind of looks like a bowl, except it's just kind of thick. Right? So my job is to throw it up and out and and lessen the thickness, right? So I could leave it like this, but this is definitely like I don't know, like some monster bowl or something, right? Something that has like a like a I don't know, like its face is like made out of stone or something, right? For a 200 pound dog. Or something, right? And that really wants to kick it around or something, right? You could hit it with your car. So I definitely, that's a consideration weight and usage. So I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna push harder from the inside here. Push, 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 push. And then start applying pressure. I'm applying more pressure now from the outside. I better slow down. See how slow I'm going. Oh, I, I'm worried about now getting too thin. So I'm letting up the pressure. You see that, how I let up the pressure? Now, why is that important? Because I could always thin this part out later, right? This part thinning out is easy. This part here, if I make it too thin and too weak, it's never coming back, right? That makes sense? That I can't bring it. So always this rim always gets a little distorted, so we're gonna fix that. You see that, spend some time doing some repair work there. 
right? So now I kind of have to judge it. Is it getting weak? This clay is really weak, but it's still really thick. So I'm gonna really wet the snot down here out of it. So how am I gonna wet this down? I'm gonna hold my finger here and just spill some water in so it gets all over the place. And then I can smear it around. I can now do the same thing, smear it around the outside. So it's all wet and happy. And then we'll go again. So here, this, I can squeeze a little bit more down here. I just aren't familiar with the clay. I'll squeeze a little bit here, right? But getting close to the end about, I can feel it. This is, even though it's still like a finger's width thick, I have to start thinking about the end, like how much, what I want it to be, how much strength do I need to make it that way, right? If I'm really gonna lay it out, really open it up later, like really lay it out flat, like half as flat as this, I need to take it easy and leave some strength here, right? If I'm gonna leave it kind of like the way it is and I can thin it out more, that makes sense everybody? So as you lay it out further, you run out of options for later, right? So I'm gonna squeeze kind of down here a little bit more, thin this out just a little bit more, but I'm gonna start leaving this now just a little bit thicker because that holds all the weight of this up, right? And so how far do you need how far or how thin can you make this? How do you know? You know by screwing up a lot, right? Like, ooh, later after it collapses, right? I know that's the only time I knew is after it collapses. So how do I know? I can kind of see the future, right? Because I've already done this a lot. I already know I have times when I've seen the clay like this here. So I'll squeeze a little bit more down here. And then I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit more here. I'll start squeezing a little bit more here. I'm really slowing it down because I really got to be watchful of what the clay is doing. Whoa. So the clay, I can see it, right? This clay is soggy and wet. It's doing one thing up here, but not holding its form here it's actually starting to recurve back down. So for me and this clay, this is it. Now, I started with a chunk of clay that was really wet. Like this would have been good plate clay, not good bowl clay. Why? Because plates don't, you're not expecting the plate to overhang like this. That makes sense? So that's it for this. If I go any further, right, it's still mostly round. You can see it dipping a little bit, right? You see that? That's because it got weak, right? So. I'm going to start cleaning this up and calling it quits. So here we go. We're going to mop up all this mess here. Yeah. Correct. You can. Yep. I'm not going to, though. Because I believe that if I really wanted some, like, so this is a demo bowl, right? This is for a class. So the leeway, I thought I could get what exactly what I wanted but it's not quite there, right? But I could have started with better clay, right? One is that was my, that was my problem. This clay was too wet to do what this type of bowl, right? So yes, so, but it, it's free. I don't wanna take half a bag of the normal clay, right? Does that make sense? Cause that's $15 a bag. I don't wanna use that for a demo piece that probably it's gonna get trimmed, may never even get fired. All right, so problems here. It's 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 not quite round anymore, right? It's sagging on one side, you guys can see that. That's okay, because no one's ever gonna look at it that closely again, right? You guys see it when it's moving, but no one's ever gonna look that closely. Now, I may be able to fix that later, but I'm not gonna be able to fix that now. What I have to fix, or would be great to fix, is that it has this beautiful, let's bring this in a little bit, has this beautiful curve. Let's look at the opposite side, maybe. Oh, let's look right yeah, there. So it has this beautiful curve, but then there's this bump here, right? That perks, that's sticking that's sticking out, right? Uh, where am I? It has this bump here that's sticking out here. You guys see that? So I want to push that back down. You always want the ins, you throw for the inside of the bowl. Right, I don't care how the outside looks. So get a chunky rib here. I hope this can sustain this, right? And what I'm hoping is that as this recurves back down, I want to push this chunk back down to that level. And what I'm hoping for that as I do that, it will tidy itself up. 
All right, there we go. So now, it, you see I just kind of took care of that. What we'll do also is I'll show you how to trim the inside of a big bowl next time a little bit. All right, so I'm spending some time doing this, and then here I have to push a little bit more aggressively. You see how slow I'm going? If I go any faster than this, I'll run into problems. You guys know why? I shouldn't have stopped there in the middle either. So if I go faster than that, that, what do you call it? That force when you're on the merry-go-round in the middle, you're whatever people, centripetal, whatever force on the edge is much more dramatic. Look how wide this is, right? And I don't want it sinking any further down. If I go fast, what's gonna happen? It's gonna whoop, it's gonna fall flat. And that's what I'm battling the most right now. There we go. And then I'm gonna come back in here. You see I'm smoothing out that part. There we go. So what are some issues that I still need to fix? I would love to fix this little thing here. It is too wet for me to deal with that part. Let's try it, might as well. Knowing when to stop though is the other key, right? It's these finger marks. So it's a, this is my tendency ever since I was little or little thrower John, I always make this part thinner than this, this part. So I always have that line there if I'm not careful and I didn't have the opportunity to go back and fix it. Why don't I fix it? This is on the verge of collapsing. So we're not gonna fix that. We're just gonna let it sit there and we're gonna clean this rim up. And here we go. And then we're almost done, almost done. I think you should have used the fifteen dollar clay. It would have turned out beautiful, right? If I'd right. used a well, real clay. I mean, it would just give you the opportunity to throw what you wanted to throw. No, that's okay, because this also shows you problem solving too. That's true. Right. So there, and then so why? So another thing you're probably thinking about, right, is you see how if you're in the decoration, this gives you this giant place to really say something, either with color or drawing or whatever, right? This is just a gorgeous surface. Does that make sense to everybody? Like, it's just so awesome. All right, so what are we gonna do? We're just gonna leave the rest of this like this. It's not quite finished, but at the beginning of the next class, I'll show you how we make this look really beautiful. Because your if you make a plate this big or bowl this big, it isn't gonna turn out great. It's gonna have flaws, 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 flaws. Right, that makes sense. If I started with a good piece of clay, I could almost look flawless, right? Because I really understand the clay, right? If you start with new Christy Lombard and you have a good relationship with it, meaning you know how thick, how thin, all that, how to predict the future, you would have could have stopped a little bit earlier and I could have strength, right? All right, so that's parts done. And then we're gonna undercut just like we do a plate, right? So let's see if we can get that to the right spot. Here, use this guy here. I'm not gonna try to cut any off. I am gonna clean it all off though. Maybe, let's take this off. I wanna do this so you guys can see it. So let's go a little faster, John. There we go. So here, I'm gonna take this edge of this tool, right? I'm not gonna try to under take any clay off. I'm just gonna insert it in a place where you guys can see it. You see, I'm just pushing it in, right? I'm just like the plate, right? Because this is already so weak. I've made plates that I could undercut it. It would stay, and then I picked it up, our bowls, and I set them down, and that even the undercut weakened it. It just collapsed, right? And this is on the verge of collapsing, right? And then just like plates, right, I'll take my wire tool, and I'll wire the whole thing off, right? Take the splash pan off, get it, the wire, so it's seated right in that part where you just cut it off, and then spin it, and you see I'm holding the wire below the level of the wheel head, right? And then, this is the other tricky part, is you gotta make sure you come all the way out the other side, right? I, and even I am in a rush, I come through, and I'll lop off part of my, my bowl rim. Right, does that make sense? So I'll do it one more time, make sure it's seated. I'm doing it without looking, right? And then go in, 
and across and you come all the way out so you can see the wire, right? You gotta come all the way out. And that's it. So what is gonna happen with this? I'm just gonna leave it out. My bet is even leaving it out, it won't be dry enough next class, right? That makes sense? And so I'm gonna have to flip it over, deal with it. Next class, we're gonna show you how to make this inside perfect and beautiful. For bigger bowls, when you're really pushing your limit, it's very difficult for you to make that perfect and beautiful right off the bat. It's big enough that you can get a trimming tool in here pretty easily to trim this smooth, right? And so that's what we'll do next class and then flip it over, turn the bottom. That sound good? Yeah. So it doesn't have to be this big. I started with 10 pounds. You can start with four or five pounds. That would work. Yay.